forty days and forty nights you were fasting in the wild forty days and forty nights tempted and yet undefiled welcome to saint patrick's glad to see all of you here let us take a moment now as we begin this first Sunday of Lent to, to begin our liturgy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's take a moment and acknowledge our own sins and to ask the Lord for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You, have seated, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Grant Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue the, their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, the priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Armenian who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out from Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country, he gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence, the word of the Lord. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, Say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, no evil shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near your tent, for to his angels he has given command about you, that they guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the asp and the viper. You shall trample down the lion and the dragon. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me, and I will deliver him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and glorify him. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, 
in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on his name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, is, It is written, does, does, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give you all this power and glory. It has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. And this, is your, this will be yours if you worship me. And Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem and made him stand on the pulpit of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil, when the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel this weekend is about temptation. Is it a trick question in life? Our readings help us to think about temptation because it is all part of our lives. It helps us to think about them so that hopefully that we won't be tricked. Hopefully we will see the trick. St. Paul gives us the great foundation of how to overcome the tricks of temptation. Paul says, faith in the heart leads to justification on the lips. If you want to overcome temptation in your life, rely on the faith you have in your heart. It will come out in everything you say and think and do. Jesus gives us a better counsel of his actions in Luke, in the Gospel from Luke. We see Jesus in the desert after 40 days, and he is tempted three times. The basic temptations of humanity. We experience the temptations that you and I experience. Trim down your trim temptations. Jesus gets nailed with these three temptations. What are my hungers? What are the things I desire? Power, the thing you really want to control? Trust, knowledge? If I knew more, I would have, more, I would have to trust less? Jesus responds to each of them. How can he respond to temptation at all? How does, the heart, how does, the, how does he beat the system? <clears throat> Jesus confronts the temptation. He doesn't try to run from the temptation. Jesus gets tempted. Do we think we are better? Do we try to hide from our temptations? Do we try not to think about them? If we do not think about it, it'll go away. Jesus wouldn't run away. What makes us think that we are better? Confront your temptations. Know your temptations or they will know you. They will know you better than you know you. 
know your temptations, not knowing and running from your temptation, you do so at your own peril. Think if Christ would confront them. He wouldn't have left you to confront your own, yours alone. The second thing we need to know about our temptations, at the heart of every single temptation, there is a lie. Satan is a prince of lies. If you don't think that is true, just think about every time that you've had to ever been tempted in your life and you've given in. That was great. I can't believe that I've not been doing this on more regularly. This was a good stuff. How do, how do I not know this truth? How did I not see this truth? At the single temptation, what is that? I thought it was going to be good. It appeared to be good at the time. At the end of the day, I feel kind of sick. There's the lie. He is the prince of lies. Satan is the master of the settle. He sneaks in and masquerades, so incredible. If you're not confronting it regularly, you'll miss the settle. He is here, and then he's what we do. He is, and then what do we do? We begin to believe the lie when we think it's true. In the gospel, Jesus is tempted by Satan after 40 days in the desert. Jesus has already had his lint. He has 40 days of denying himself. What has that penitential period done for Jesus? It pulled him away from temptation. It has eliminate, eliminated any of the things that, he, that have ever clouded his life so that he might not be recognized that he might not recognize his temptations for what, is tr what it truly is. We are invited this Lenten season as well to use these 40 days to let these things that normally clutter our minds, to let those things that normally obscure the lie to get out of our way. That is what our penance should be doing. If your penance is not doing that, whatever you, what you're selected to do, if it's not meeting the bill, get rid of it. Find a new one. To no, that's crazy. There is no tempt there is no completion. There's not a race we're trying to keep at. First reading from Moses at the end of the forty days, but at the end of forty years in the desert, forty years of penance, and they finally get to the promised land. What's the first thing they do? Let's stop it. Give thanks. Let's offer first fruits. The first good things that they have happened to us. Let us offer them up to the Lord in thanksgiving for the ways in which we have been able to get to this point. I invite you to do the same, to give thanks for the ways in which you have been able to overcome temptation during this Lenten season. In Matthew's gospel, it ends differently. It says the angels came and waited on him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At the beginning of Lent, let us pray for the spirit of repentance. For peace and unity in the church, we pray. For peace, particularly in Ukraine, we pray. For reconciliation among nations, we pray. 
For those among us preparing for baptism, we pray. For those who are undergoing doubt and temptation, we pray. For all those who have gone before us in faith, especially for those for whom this Mass is offered and for those who are dying in the war, we pray. For all gathered here around the table of the word and sacrament, we pray. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. God of mercy, bring, back, bring us back to you and to the life your Son won for us by his death on the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Again we keep his solemn fast, a gift of faith from ages past. This Lent which binds us lovingly to faith and hope and charity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you, and lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through this fe his feast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that even so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mysteries, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other some sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. And let us pray. May bountiful blessings, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people 
that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now in peace. From ashes to the living font, your church must journey, Lord. Baptized in grace, in grace renewed by your most holy word.